The modern world is full of threats. Terrorism, drug cartel fights, kidnappings for ransom. There are people who face death every day. They risk their lives to protect the world's stars. They secure convoys, repel pirate attacks. Tough, unbending. They never hesitate to take a bullet for their clients. Professional bodyguards. Their training is pain, sweat, and adrenaline. We accompany them during missions in countries where death is around every corner. We reach places where no one else has dared to go. We reveal the greatest secrets of their dangerous work. Bodyguard Elite. Vlavchevki, a village where the population is just over 200, located 45 kilometers from Poznan. In this little village, located amidst forests and lakes of Greater Poland, is the largest bodyguard training center in Europe, the European Security Academy. One. Two. Okay, good. Three. So whenever you are going to stand, please just train the move, okay? The balance, correct balance with the correct grip. The academy trains potential candidates from all over the world. All of the classes are taught in English. Very good, very good, very good. The founder of the academy is Dr. André Brill, a.k.a. The Doctor, military expert, martial arts master and doctor of sociology. He is an undisputed authority in the world of bodyguards. As always, everything in life starts with a dream. In this magical place, I decided to build a trapper's hut for old veterans. Veterans of war, those who worked as contractors. And that's where it started. No theory is better than practice, and the doctor has over 30 years of experience. The reality of the mission is well known to the former commander of the Special Forces, General Marek Olbricht. I was impressed by the fact that Dr. Brill was a full professional, not having spent a single day in the Army. However, he knew about things, which I'm sure quite many in the Army did not know of. In the 90s of the last century, he founded the first private facility in Poland, preparing candidates for work in government and civil security services. Being a boy in a small provincial town, I read a lot of westerns, about adventures, about adventurers. Having these qualifications, that by the grace of God I was gifted, I wanted to test myself in the real world as soon as possible. Andrei conducts training in three to four high-risk countries in the Middle East and Africa. For many years, he worked as a military contractor within troubled areas of the continent. It is a service under constant stress and a real threat to life. You should break the stereotype that a security guard, a personal security guard, or an operator must necessarily be very strong, very tall. He must be a superman. It turns out that physical features are not the most important features, but it's the psycho-mental ones. The ability to move around in a convoy, to use weapons efficiently, and to work in a team are the ABCs of any security agent. Contrary to popular belief, shooting is the last resort. What matters most is critical thinking, anticipating threats and prevention. These elements are also practiced in training. 
If there is something that gives me the greatest satisfaction in my life, it is the patter of the feet of these 200 men, their cheers, their pace, their hearts, their heartbeat, to feel and know that they are like my children who have been led from start to finish and have successfully completed the training, that they will begin to work and they will be well prepared for the job. Africa fascinated Andre. He was designing the infrastructure of the academy. He decided to show this fascination. An African city sprang up in the heart of Greater Poland. Tactical training facilities recreate the buildings of the Somali capital, Mogadishu. Working in Africa, I was also interested in city architecture, architecture which personally inspired me a lot. And a place like this, which I remember the most, which was closest to me, was Mogadishu. Hence, the architecture of Mogadishu also seemed to me the most functional for tactical and training reasons. Attention to detail is not a fad. The doctor has trained bodyguards for over 25 years and knows that tactical and operational training must take place under the most realistic conditions possible. Practically in front of me, his entire career as a company boss was taking off. And move faster, so change the places, yes, understandable, because it'd be hard for you. Yes, 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 yes. The training takes students to an African town, overcome by bloody conflict. Live ammunition is not used during training. Okay, two cars ready. Driver scene. On the door. On the door. Scanning sectors, yes, sectors. Students must demonstrate their dexterity in the most stressful moments. In order for the mission to be successful, everyone must faultlessly perform the task entrusted to them. Belonging to the bodyguard elite is not determined by physical fitness or above-average courage. The role of the bodyguard is generally associated with Kevin Costner and his great role in the movie Bodyguard. But this work is best done by ordinary people who have real values and a sense of inner decency, a natural righteousness. And one more role. A carefully selected group is responsible for the training and instructors. Veterans of armed conflict serving every part of the globe, former commanders of special forces, masters of martial arts, and weapons experts. The doctor makes sure that the knowledge is passed on by the best of the best. He employs many instructors from abroad. These are instructors from units that have a high rank in the world. It's not like some second grade trainer comes here, someone who got fired from those units for various reasons, and now he gets to play the big guy here. One of such instructors is Bill. Bill is a former soldier in the elite U.S. Delta Force. He took part in many combat missions in Somalia, Afghanistan, and Iraq. He knows that the doctor's experience allows him to prepare cadets for the profession. I've met Dr. Brill uh, several times, first in Jordan. Um, he comes across as a very quiet professional, and he is, absolutely, without a doubt. 
All of us, that is, these veterans, are pleased with the multitudes of young people who come here to undergo a certain transformation and to transfer from this military career, from this military to work and to the civilian market. The training facility is remarkable. It's got everything you need. They have all the best equipment and their curriculum is it's well done. I, I enjoy teaching their curriculum. You'll be a team leader, okay? Take two minutes, organize the team, and then move out, all right? Keep moving, communicate, all right? You're a leader, take charge. From the beginning of its existence, 10,000 students have undergone training at the academy. Training is held throughout the entire year. Hands up! The first step is the easiest. To qualify for the course, you need to send a CV, a certificate of good health, and justify your intention for participating in the training. The going gets tough later. As many as one out of five of the cadets do not pass the final exam. Of those who do, only every third actually end up working in this extremely demanding profession. Students who come here from different parts of the world, who speak different languages, are culturally different, they will work as one consolidated team. They're going to create a kind of solid rock, a monolith that allows them to understand security processes that are mostly based on teamwork. Rapid is the head of the instructors. He is one of the fastest shooters in the world. Look, I'm supporting, I'm not catching my weapon. Stay in one place, shoot. Stay in one place, shoot. Stay in one place, shoot. Follow through! It's not that this is just a place full of male testosterone. I must say that more and more women come to us who also have or see their place in this sector. Ready? Go! Until recently, women were rare in the industry. Now they are downright desirable. They are not typically associated with security. They can operate discreetly. This is especially true in Arab countries where gender separation is strictly adhered to. Jennifer is finishing her service in the British Army. She wants to become a bodyguard. I went straight for him just to sort of get him back, but it was good fun. But it was scary because in a in a real situation like that, um, you know, if someone comes against you with a knife, you have to think quick. The academy covers 150 hectares. It houses a tactical and training center, off-road courses, a marina, and shooting range complex. All this allows to implement courses based on the training of the American Secret Service, the Israeli Shin Bet, or the Russian FSB. The main thing is not to be a slave to stereotypes, because a gun doesn't kill. It is a person who kills with a gun, someone who uses this weapon in the wrong way, in the wrong situation. Students train, among others, on Glock 17 and 19 pistols. The shooting ranges were designed by the doctor. It is one of the largest and best equipped complexes in Europe. If he were in the military, he would be a really brilliant commander because he would train people with a firm hand and at the same time give them a lot of freedom. During the training sessions at the shooting range, adrenaline reaches maximum levels. Weapons and ammunition are real. Bullets fly centimeters from the head, causing stress. The slightest mistake can lead to a tragedy. However, every moment spent in such conditions will pay off in the future.
For many years, the doctor's achievements have been followed by Lieutenant Colonel Khrushchev Tripyurko, a systems designer, security, and longtime soldier of Grom. We've known each other for 35 years. Our first meeting was in Zakopane. Andrzej had arrived there with his hand-to-hand -hand combat program. This program is called the BAS Direct Combat System. Andrzej Brill created it for the training of the army and police. After the demonstration, the colonels decided not to use it because it was too accident prone. If you see any movement, any reaction, react, okay? Right? Again. Look, this is what I'm doing now. Listen, I'll touch your right ear, okay? If I hit it like this, we'll have a man on the ground who can't do anything. If I want to break through, listen, put your elbows on me very hard, with all your strength, as if you want to push through me, break me, like this, like that, yes. One, and the second, right? Look, nothing is happening. Why? Despite the fact that the boy has a lot of strength, he is pushing me. Look how I'm going to do this. It shows this strength only because if I see an opponent in the crowd, I'm always going to hold his head. Always supporting the head and engaging as hard as possible. Fighting has always been my strongest suit. In short, I like to fight. I liked physical contact with others. I was always getting in trouble with my parents. To deal with this, I found myself training in various martial arts. I noticed that an arena fight, a sports fight, and a street fight are two different things. We move on to rejection and attack. In creating Bass, the doctor relied on martial arts, fights, and his personal missions experience. Bass's essence is to eliminate the opponent by causing permanent physical damage or death. The security agent training covers only some of the elements of this ruthless but extremely effective system. Not everyone can do it, because somewhere in the army there were regulations, there were tricks and blows, and it was withdrawn. You can't draw a fight. As I thought, he won't give him the slightest chance. In fact, the security agent has a second. One second to react. Take the gun and hold the gun to my forehead. Remember to shoot in the head. Okay, let me tell you this. Check it out, it's just one move. Now listen, you know what I'm going to do. Just put the gun to my stomach. Ready? You can tell that he's a warrior. I guarantee he's got the skills to take a man down with no problem. Proficient weapon use and hand-to-hand -hand combat are the basics. Every bodyguard has to master them. Specialization requires additional training. Individual features and predispositions decide. The security agent in high-risk countries does a bit different qualifications than ship security operator or personal security specialist. The Academy also trains Marine security officers. There were over 200 cases of piracy reported in 2015. Ship owners paid out tens of millions of dollars in ransom. No ship with armed security has been seized by pirates.
Military contractors need to master methods of protection in a war zone to perfection. Without advanced shooting training or the ability to organize a convoy in areas covered by military operations, their usefulness amounts to zero. The area of interest is here, the cottage house. 1800, I will pick you up on that road. What matters most is teamwork. The motto is, the strength of the group is determined by the weakest link. Personal protection agents do not hesitate to accept a bullet for their client. When they are to be visible, they remain visible. When discretion counts, they know how to remain unseen. Even during periods of apparent calm, they cannot afford to be distracted. The attackers can attack right at the moment of relaxation. Bodyguards are constantly on the verge of life and death. When an attack occurs, they must keep the client and themselves alive. It's also up to their medical skills to be up for the task. All right, two minutes gone. I got no soaking blood through. Medical training is conducted by Veer, who participated as a paramedic in over 100 helicopter missions in war zones. Very often, battlefield medicine is brutal, yes. Putting on a tourniquet really hurts. The extreme realism of the training is to get the cadets familiar with the sight of blood and wounds, thanks to which they'll work better in the face of real bodily harm. Vir is convinced that the students appreciate the importance of these exercises. I think these are people who are primarily aware that battlefield medicine is very important. Because when nothing is happening, right, that's all very cool. But once we already have, so to speak, a wounded, an actually injured person on our hands, it would be good to know what to do with this victim. I think it's okay. All right, slowly release the pressure. In the future, in crisis situations, the cadets need to be able to rely on the automatic reactions acquired during the training. The examination will check their ability to secure the injured party and the wounds that will be found. Of course, if they are found by a medic, because nobody's really shooting at us here. Here, we know that we can always say, OK, stop, or I give up. While in real life, we really have, as I say, only one shot. The training prepares the students for effective first aid during their service. Bodyguards will also learn methods of effective evacuation of a wounded person from a place of danger, for example, from being caught in rapid fire. You just save your ass, all right? At the beginning, it was chaos, it was chaotic, you were stressed, but when you get to the sea, you start to move smooth. You got go. Good job. Thank you. Good job. The Academy trains nearly 600 cadets each year. Classes last 12 hours a day. Only those who are exceptionally strong physically and mentally will make it.
Achieving work-life balance in this field of work is not easy. Horses are a huge passion of the doctors. Thanks to them, he is able to gain some perspective on the matters related to the academy. Caring for horses requires discipline and regularity. These qualities are also essential in his daily work. Horses in Poland are more than just animals. They are like family members. Hence, all our horses are actually more well cared for than we are, in terms of how I work with them and how I handle them. My great-grandfather had horses. My grandfather had horses, and I guess this love for horses has stayed within me, too. These are special horses because they are horses trained for carriage as well as for riding under the saddle. They all have had victories. They have won some medals. So together we fight to be better at what we do every day, including how we work with each other, how we agree with each other. Andrzej has been training in martial arts for several decades. He was the first Pole to obtain a world champion's degree at the Taekwondo Institute of Canada. When I look at these Taekwondo encyclopedia manuals, I look at my story. Because, in fact, General Choi Hong Hee, the founder of Taekwondo, made me. Years of training, years of sacrifice. This is what General Choi Hong Hee wrote when he handed me this encyclopedia, that I am like his second son. In Taekwondo, he won the third dad. As a coach, he raised many European and Polish world champions in this one discipline. For me, the greatest value in all I have gained is this certificate handwritten by the General Choi Hong Hee, aged over 80, as if reflecting on his relationship to his place in life and in what is called Taekwondo. Over the years, Andre has developed his own way of dealing with stress and regaining inner peace. The only thing that really calms me down and relaxes me is culture, art, Russian music. I love browsing through the works of people like Kshishkin, like Ivazovsky. And on the other hand, I listen to music, and most of all, attend, watch Russian ballet. The doctor is still working on expanding the infrastructure of the European Academy of Conservation. He wants to transform a ruined 19th century manor house into a training and conference center. This manor house has a long history connected with Poland. It was Count Jagolewski's manor. Well, there's not much left of it. Hence, the work is very difficult and very arduous. We really have to rebuild it from scratch. Andre has practiced building from scratch in the past, as he has set up a bodyguards training center and created a consortium of private security companies. We are at the main entrance part of the Congress Center. 
do centrum kongresowego. Niestety, Fortunately, there was practically no foundation. So we are recreating a whole network of foundations on which a great mezzanine will be opened and a porch entrance to the main floors. Andre has a lot of work to do because, so far, the beautiful manor exists only in his head. He goes forward like a battering ram. But he is a battering ram that does not devastate the surroundings and does not cause the grass to stop growing. The only thing in life that turns me on are new challenges. We work where nobody wants to work anymore. On the one hand, it's sour, and in fact, we often have sour faces. But on the other hand, this experience makes us credible, because whoever comes out of the biggest shit is actually the most respected. The doctor divides his time between work at the academy and missions in high-risk countries. This time, he is going to northern Iraq. The area is within the limits of the military operations of the Islamic State. Erbil, the capital city of the Kurdish Autonomous Region. Despite the many dangers, Andrei came to northern Iraq to personally supervise the course of training. It is prepared according to his original concept. Due to the ongoing armed conflict, Kurds cannot leave their territories to train in Poland. What always kept me going was rebuilding myself and drawing from my challenges and experiences, actualizing myself. I always wanted to know where I am. Where do I currently stand in terms of, I don't know, courage, fear, professionalism? And to the question, where am I? I try to continuously ask myself this question. There are attacks on these streets every day. Full body armor and bulletproof vests are absolutely necessary here. The missions are coordinated by Andre's former student, from Brazil, who knows the conditions of the region perfectly. The devastating war left a cruel mark on Kurdistan. This area lies adjacent to the quasi-state ISIS, whose terror is spreading like wildfire. By the end of 2015, Islamists had killed 15,000 soldiers and civilians in the conquered territories. The training takes place in a center specially prepared for this purpose. This is Saddam Hussein's former prison near Kirkuk. In the past, it was the scene of the cruelest crimes. Today, it is a place that helps successfully prevent them. EVO is responsible for adapting the facility. After completing the courses at the academy, he was sent to Kurdistan. Andre has a huge trust for him. The day by day is totally different of, from Europe, US, South America, so they act in a different way. I enjoy the job and someone must do this job. No? Kurds must be extremely brave, but in a clash with terrorists, they often have no chance. They lack professional training. Andre's team will ensure that they have more of an equal chance. We start with that group over here. Yeah. The front guy is taking one, pretty much 180 front and the side here. This is the him. While the doctor is evaluating the logistics of a containment operation, Rapid is doing tactical training. Accompanied by Saba Maki, the battle translator, fluent in English, Arabic, and one of the Kurdish dialects. The same here. This is his sector. The, the major concept is to keep the box formation all the time, the equal distance between each other. This is the first thing. Okay, guys, walk! 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 Walk naturally. When you walk, walk naturally.
training participants are subjected to murderous training. They must demonstrate not only knowledge of weapons and good physical fitness, but also prove that they are able to work in a team. You have to understand your objective and you have to understand yourself. To, to accomplish the mission, to get the job done. Thank you. Good job. Good job. Good job. Good job. Good job. Good job. The doctor's training is necessary for the Kurds to be able to conduct a balanced fight against terrorists. A visit to the center and supervising the training of military contractors is not the end of Andre's mission. Terrorist attack threats are permanent in Kurdistan, hence the high demand for effective bodyguards and private military contractors. On Andre's recommendation, the best graduates of the academy, such as Evo, come here. A professional bodyguard's role goes far beyond the work of the contractor. He thinks about every aspect of securing the person he or she protects, including the prosaic ones. The client cannot get wet. Kurdistan's situation in the international arena is very complicated, and there are great politics at stake. It will take a long time for the Kurds to build their own normal world. I think all of us, I mean operators or policemen or commandos, all of us are afraid. We are just human beings, we are handicapped. On the other hand, each of us is well trained in overcoming fear, pain and other mental or physical barriers. The next task awaits him on the border with the Islamic State. This is where terrorist acts occur most often. A few days earlier, an Islamic fundamentalist blew himself up at one of the checkpoints. Four military contractors died. Contractors are equipped with, among others, Soviet machine guns designed to fight targets at distances up to 1,000 meters. We are maybe getting so close in a range of a sniper rifle. So just in case, we need to actually throw the biggest uh, fire, you know, fire. Just in case we can actually like, get in there. Okay? Okay, let's get in the car. See this road, sir? Yeah. Okay. Everything behind this river is all ISIS on the other side. Okay. Yeah, all of this. All of this is still like controlled by uh, Peshmerga, oh, Peshmerga and, and, yeah, and okay. this side. Okay. But literally, this is our position right now here. Okay. We're gonna take this road, and then take uh, left here. Yeah. Because if you go all the way, that's actually gonna go ahead to Mosul. Oh. Checking all team ready. The destination is 15 kilometers from Mosul, a city captured by ISIS. From this point, we have two checkpoints. It's only an hour away. For someone who dares to complete this route, it's the longest 60 minutes in your life. English? No. No. Tell him to, you know to not, not to stop. Please to, to, to continue. Once we leave the uh, the air bill. Okay. The turn. Don't block. No block. The air bill is quite safe. Okay. When we leave this area, we go through the checkpoint. Uh, you can expect anything. 
like uh, ISIS attacks, bombs, uh, the time you really need to be alert. They can keep the distance, the equal distance, and you can be, you know, in the front, you know, just to yeah. sweep and scan things. The team is good. Uh, they are locals, okay, all locals. Uh, I trained most of them to put on the uh, academy level. So it's a work we are working on now. They can do the job. They will be good someday. It will be really good. I need a vest for Marek. The bodyguards must remain vigilant. Here, a fighter for the Islamic State could turn out to be anyone. A woman resting or a truck driver. At any time, someone could open fire or blow up up into the air. We are currently near the town of Gres. We're heading towards the front line of the fight against the Islamic State. We want to check both the level of security and the preparation of Peshmerga and actually research what are the local needs, because in fact they are the first buffer and defense against the expansion of the Islamic State to further areas. In Iraq, as in Syria, the Peshmerga, those who look at death, are Kurdish insurgents who, a long time ago, seized weapons to fight for the independence of their nation. Traveling in Kurdistan is a game of Russian roulette. At any moment, a real threat could occur. Convoy fire, suicide bomber attacks, IEDs explosion, that is, improvised trap mine. Doctors' missions are a constant brushing against death. I'm not afraid of death because it's part of my work, otherwise I shouldn't be doing it. So I also don't get too emotional if someone is injured or if someone suffers, because a blind person doesn't play cards. If I decide to do this, I take responsibility, because someone trusted me and someone believed me. This is clear to me. Visits to the front line allow you to understand the real needs and threats of this place. They help to find the right course of action, to stay one step ahead of the terrorists. One of the doctor's clients is a Korean company that is building the first state-owned hydroelectric power plant in Kurdistan. At a conference with its representative, Andre prepares a detailed evacuation plan in the event of an attack. Uh, so since we since we joined this project, since we come to uh, come to Iraq first time, actually the we are very you know the uh, fear, fearful of everything around this environment. We feel very safe. We focus on our job to build that this power plant like that. Yes, yeah, yeah. So I believe everything will be okay. All right. yeah. Proper threat assessment is key to minimizing the effects of a potential attack. Substantive support from Andre and his trained employees make the local defense shield more effective day by day. Here we are 15 kilometers to the ISIS position, hence the constant state of tension, constant preparation for a possible repulsion of an attack that may occur at any moment. We should all care about supporting the security of the Kurds, because this area is a buffer zone. It ensures security not only in the region, but also for neighboring countries. The war with the Islamic State will take a lot more casualties. Military contractors may also be among them. ISIS pays $150,000 to kill or capture a foreigner and uses each death for propaganda purposes. Mission accomplished. Thanks to the excellent preparation of agents, once again the worst-case scenario was avoided. 
For me, the right word to describe what I do and what I expect from others is responsibility. And consequently, determination and consistent action will allow us to believe that the task we undertake, and we work in the area of life and death, will be carried out properly. After returning to Poland, Andrzej will continue to develop his center near Poznań. In the following episodes of Bodyguard Elite, the secrets of training the world's most dangerous professions. Missions to high-risk countries. Adrenaline, stress, and playing with death. The turbulent contemporary world gives birth to more and more dangers. Only the Bodyguard Elite can prevent many of them. Elita Bodyguardów.